Hello, I'm Siddhartha, and uh, I'm a spiritual seeker of sorts, and uh, and uh, a psychiatrist by profession. And uh, today we have uh, with us uh, Isaac Shapiro, who uh, has agreed to sit for this interview. And uh, Isaac is a enlightened uh, man, a disciple of uh, Punjaji and uh, through that lineage to Ramana Maharshi. And he is presently giving satsangs in Amsterdam and will continue till the 7th of June. And we wanted to have this opportunity to bring his message and his energy to the public at large. So, hello Isaac, and thanks for coming. Thanks. Yeah. And, uh, uh, in a way, I am a little reluctant to ask you any questions, because if you turn on too many more people, there's going to be no room for me in the, in the satsang, because... <laughs> so let's make a really terrible interview. Let's make a terrible interview. Okay, and see if we can chase people away. Because okay. uh, <laughs> we, we have a, a, a big crowd coming at the present time. And we might just want to announce that it's at Trans Buddha in the red light district, and that's where satsang is held every night at 7.30, except on the weekends. Uh, when uh, it's from one to nine. So Isaac, what I thought I'd ask you to start, and maybe this is, you know, the finish in a certain way, but if you were going to die today, you have a lot of people who love you and who are out there and are sort of following your teaching, etc. Do you have a message that you would like to leave for the world at large and for the people who are particularly your disciples? <laughs> it's a sort of a loaded question. I think. Papaji was well known for saying, no teacher, no teaching, no student. So, following that tradition, it's not my experience, actually, that I have any... Uh, devotees or disciples. Some people love what's happening to them from being in satsang, this is clear. And the mystery of it is, is that we don't do anything. There's no, there's not a particular message that's been given to people. It's simply an invitation to know who you are in your own experience, so that there's no uh, nothing you have to believe or nothing that you have to do, but just simply see for yourself. So, because of this there's no real message, and uh, it, it remains very simple. Well, you... you uh seem to be unique in a way of being able to keep this message kind of simple and to the point. And in that sense, I think you're rather unique, even of Punjaji's disciples, to kind of keep this to, for people to have the experience themselves of who they are. And certainly you must be watching a lot of transformations happening to people. Yes, this, this clearly happens. How it exactly happens, I don't know, but that it happens, that I can see. <laughs> so is it that you trust that if all of a sudden you disappeared from the earth plane, that yes. this process, whatever, if people are incomplete with this process, some, some other way would come for them yes. to complete the process? Yes, for sure. Just uh, like Papaji left his body, but the fire has not gone out. People are... He touched so many, so many people. And this fire that, that awakened in his presence is burning. And it's touching many other people, so it, it has to continue. He, he, he died just recently. Yes, yeah, September last year. 
And is my voice loud enough for this? Right. And uh, uh, can you say something about that? I mean, you you. Uh, what effect this had on you, and particularly? I can say that my mind doesn't function in the way of measuring effects any longer because it just ends up being trying to snatch something out of the air. I mean, and to try and explain this, I mean, in this moment, if I try and speak about my experience, even of this instant, I don't, I don't know where I'd start and where I'd finish. So, because there's so much, you see, it's just so, and, and there's nothing that you can, act, basically the mind likes to label different things and say that's what's going on, labeling different sensations and labeling different conclusions from their, those sensations. But the actual experience itself, where Papaji pointed me or showed me was what is beyond the mind. And in this, there is the direct experience that he could never leave me. Who he, who he is is the same as who I am, is the same as who you are. There's no difference, actually. So, that which he is never actually died. His body left, and sure, with his body leaving, different thoughts and emotions came up. Um... But again, it's like they have about as much relevance as a dr any dream. Yeah, they, they're not so, for me, not so important. But you're you're one of the lucky ones. I mean, you sort of completed your your journey with Punjaji. He has told you that you, you're now to kind of go out and 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 be be available for satsang in the world. And and uh, but. Uh, do you have any sense of what's happening to many disciples who have been pretty much attached to his physical body and felt, uh, you know, that they were looking to complete the journey with him? And uh, Is he in a way, I mean, I can say, on one level you can say there was no journey, because when you see who you are, you see that you've always been that, mm -hmm. and there was no journey to that, you are that. Mm -hmm. And yet, at the same time, there's an, there's an, a depth that keeps opening up that, as far as I can see, is never ending. So, in that sense, you could call it a journey that's not, but that's never complete. But, um, For the Sangha that was living around Papaji, uh, again, there's no generalization that can be made. There's some people that are, have been moved into the depths of their being and, and are just letting that unfold. And some people have picked up other teachers. And who, I, I've got news of a bunch of people, but people just went where it was natural for them to go. There's still quite a few people that live in Lucknow. They still are. Yeah. Mm. And apparently a very nice uh, feeling, but I think in time it'll all disperse. <coughs> okay, to get back to you a little bit, um, <laughs> how, how, you've been doing this for, I, I mean, it seems like three or four years that I've been seeing you in... Since, in, since 92. Since 92. Yeah. And can you tell us something a little bit about your experience just in that way? I mean, you've been traveling around the world pretty much. You're in Europe, you go to America, yes. and now you're living in Australia. Yes. And uh, uh, does it seem like, I mean, just from a mundane level, that more people are coming, or uh, uh, this, the same quality of people are coming? or uh, More people are coming, and they are... They are 
many people now that are sitting very solidly in the truth of themselves that have matured and are know who they are and enjoying and just enjoying and uh, such a beauty is with these people you can feel it if you come to satsang with such a um, a sense of of silence in in people it was interesting because one person came to satsang the other night and asked all how many people have actually know who they are here and hundreds of people raised their hands it was very beautiful to see mm -hmm. yeah, and this is their own confession this is their own saying you see it's just uh, and also like I said it's not my sense is that recognizing who you are is the first step actually in, an, in a very hot fire a very beautiful natural process that starts to happen and uh, so you, your feeling is that these satsangs are deepening in a way. Oh, ab absolutely. And absolutely. is it pretty much the same everywhere in the world that you go, or is it? Uh, are there very? Uh, is it different? You know, I'm uh, it's a good question because there are, I mean, at a mind level, definitely there's cultural differences. The the Dutch mind is quite different than the German mind, and different than the Australian mind. Yeah, but in terms of people recognizing that which is the same beyond the culture this is happening everywhere and uh, and but how does this cultural mind manifest itself in, I mean that's a, a little lower level question but I yeah well it's just you know like I guess I'm a little like bit on, a, on a, uh, one thing I you, you can notice that like the Dutch people really don't like authorities and they really like to question every authority yeah? uh -uh. and so there's there's a liveliness you could say about the Dutch people uh -huh. in this yeah and whereas German people are more they brought up in a different way where you have respect for authority so that's one cultural difference that you find yeah? and what about the Americans since I'm an American I'm a little bit interested in uh, you're, you're just going to Berkeley I only right? at this point I only go to Berkeley I have uh, been to other cities in America but at this point I only go to Berkeley and Berkeley there's an interesting phenomena when people have really uh, been to a lot of different groups and done a lot of different things there tends to be more confusion than when people are fresh mm -hmm. so very often people that have had done very little are in a lot better shape yeah, yeah. than people that have, that have been around the block and because uh, they got so many concepts and stuff that they've picked up that they're kind of caring you could say because ultimately what happens is once you get quiet all the concepts drop away all the beliefs drop away and that's part of the fire that everything that you've been holding on to basically is seen to be unimportant, it's not necessary, it's just excess baggage. So are you implying that the Berkeley group is a little bit more confused than... Uh, <laughs> 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 it seemed that way last time I was there. Uh, I see, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, you know, once people see, then the confusion is kind of, it doesn't matter. Because the confusion just has to do with, at an idea level. Trying to trying to integrate all the different ideas that they've picked up. Once they recognise that that no idea is it, they don't have to hold on to any idea. Then it doesn't matter. It it just all falls away by itself. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so um, uh, you know, I'm interested a little bit in the in the cultural differences. I I I, I tend to spend a few months in America working in, in the hospitals and. Uh, yes. You must notice it also that there's quite a culture. It's quite a difference, yeah. but I mean, from your viewpoint, I mean, especially you know, because I'm just working in the hospital. You're giving satsang, and uh, it seems like. Uh, did you also go to Israel at, uh, or not? No, I haven't been to Israel for satsang. Because uh, my experience in India was there's so many Israelis, you know, in, yeah, many. in, in search. You know, I yeah. thought it's the biggest country in the world because. Uh, 
they're all going so fast. And uh, do you have any sense of why you know certain countries are, are interested in this satsang and some you know I mean uh, don't seem to be interested at all you know is this just uh, the evolution of the of the consciousness in different places or yeah mm-hmm. hard to see again it's Somehow, these days, my mind doesn't spend much time theorizing or trying to figure out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Just uh, being is enough. Right. So, I mean, I can put my mind to it and try and come up with some theory, but I know it's just basically a theory that uh-huh. I'm sucking out of nowhere. So, <laughs> and uh, I'm willing to do it if you like. Well, I mean, it's interesting <laughs> because in satsang, you know, we, we, we really can't cover this sort of thing. thing. And, yeah, no, no, so it's, and, uh, it's good, it's fine. Please feel free to ask anything and then we just see what comes out of my mouth. Um, uh, well, I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, you're sort of doing a new thing this year that uh, you have done in that uh, you're, you're talking about relationships. And uh, uh, I was there the other day when you and your beautiful wife, you know, we're talking about your relationships and your sexual relationships and how you feel about all that and, you know, I thought it was really very incredible and uh, and also uh, a shock because, uh, you know, <laughs> from before it didn't seem like that was an area that interests you at all and uh, I'm a little bit interested in how that's, that's developed. And, Somehow, through, it can happen so many different ways for people. People get interested in truth. But usually it's because that there's been some sense of suffering. And there's a, want, a wanting to get relief from the suffering. And then people hear about enlightenment or truth or that there's some possibility to end the sense of separation, the sense of being caught up in the patterns that are, seem to be running your life. So this brings people to satsang. But for most people, even when they get an interest in truth, they still want to have relationship, they still want to have their life kind of turn out the way that they've been programmed for it to turn out. And one of the big issues that people have in this day and age is relating. So, and it's really an area that you can go to different uh, tantra workshops and things like this to look for answers, but it doesn't really solve the basic issue which is that as long as you feel separate, as long as your conditioning is to be evaluating what's going on and trying to be happy through either manipulating your own experience or your partner's experience, it, it can never work. So, fundamentally you have to know who you are. Otherwise, there's not much chance for anything to happen. But even, like I said, once you recognize who you are, there's mental habits of attention that continue for some time. And one of the areas where it troubles people is the way we relate. Because most people are not inclined towards a celibate life or towards a life of being a monk or a nun and they find themselves in relationship taking care of their kids living a life and even though they know that place that their that, that that their very nature is peace 
and love and beauty, they find themselves in, the, in their lives falling into the same traps again and again and again. And it doesn't mean that they don't know who they are. And by simply speaking about this openly, my sense is that what takes people sometimes years to discover can be sped up. That, they, that these patterns that are playing, and really the patterns are not personal at all, they just, you could say, a conditioning that's very widespread. And that the, that the building blocks of this conditioning can be seen, and once they're seen, funny enough, they tend to dissolve and disappear. So this was the... why we, why you could say, why we actually doing it, was just to open up the space for, to share with people what, what we've seen in our relating, that uh, ultimately there's, there's a number of expectations, wants, um, ideas about sex and relating that keep playing. Um, even after seeing who you are and that as they get seen there's such a relief and a way in which love can manifest you could say that because because the patterns aren't being engaged in there's a sense of love and respect that you were trying to get, but it just happens spontaneously. So it's a way, in a way, of trying to... I mean, because knowing who you are is coming to consciousness, coming to awareness. Yes. But awareness without love is sort of a little bit dry and empty and... Uh, well, it is, awareness is love, ultimately. Once you, once you really rest in awareness, you see that, it, that, it, that this is the experience of being everything. There's no boundaries, and this is this is when you everything. This is love, yeah. I mean, but, I, yeah. I I was struck by the fact that uh, so many more people are opening up because uh, of your opening up, and you're you know really being a little bit even analytical and and looking at all the aspects of your own personality and patterns and how it how it works and being willing to tell on yourself, you know, and all kinds of things that most people are a little bit embarrassed shy, yeah, and shy yeah. and, and repressed and everything. Yeah. And I was always wondering a little bit this, how we can get to this, who we are, and at the same time have a big part of us that's repressed somehow. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, this is, this is, you see, because this is also... You know, a lot of the teachers came out of India where they don't really talk about sex that much. And then Osho was, I mean, he was a wild card and he, he spoke about it and uh, invited people to really experiment with it. But you could say it was at a certain level of maturity then that people entered into this experiment. And people played around and they saw that, yes, going for your sexual desires and... and um, bring, you know, instead of repressing them, expressing them, it's, it's healthier, but it's not the end of the story. People, I think most people that really went into it found that out, although some people are still well, but I think playing with it, but uh, at some point you realize that happiness is not in repressing or in expressing, but in a deeper discovery that's going on. Because ultimately when you run after desires, you find that it doesn't end. You can, get, you can get one billion, you want two billion. You can get three ladies, you want five ladies. You, and it never ends, ultimately. So this is a... If you're really interested in peace or happiness, at some point this has to dawn, that you start to see what's going on with these tendencies and see that whatever you're wanting, whatever you're desiring, 
the moment you get it, you don't want anything. So the desiring is actually to come to that point of peace. The desire is a promise of being happy later. And so to start to see, once you start to see this, and you see that your actual nature itself is happiness, then you can, as you are going about your life, you can start to watch when some expectation comes in there. And immediately you know this for yourself. Some expectation comes in there, your experience changes. And all of a sudden you're not present, you're present with a mindset that's, that's filtering your experience. So the same thing happens you know, as men we come to uh, want to make love, or actually a lot of times if we're honest we just want sex. Ultimately we'd like to make love and we'd like to uh, have this experience of really melting and, and meeting in, the, in love, but as we start in the play of it, we end up basically having sex, fantasizing, doing our best to try and please our partner, but usually not, not even knowing if we did or didn't, and as long as they're not complaining too much, we go about our life, and we're not really satisfied, and they're not really satisfied, and then we're very surprised when they want a divorce, or they pick up some other lover, or something is going on, and, and so this, you could say these habits, or these ways of relating, um, don't often get examined because they don't often get looked at. And when they do get looked at, it's, it's kind of tricky because it's such a touchy subject. Men have this image that they're supposed to be great lovers, but nobody taught them, nobody showed them. And so they don't really want to talk about it, they don't re really want to say what's going on. And if they're with a woman and the woman tries to tell them something, the, the response is usually one, a hurt response, a feeling of inadequacy, and so it's a very tricky yeah, area what, to address. What, what you're describing is a lot of pain and suffering and Correct. agony that's come out of almost all of our relationships. Correct, and, and so there is, there is a possibility once two people recognize who they are, and you recognize that this patterning is there. And you see it. And you, you, you're not so interested even in having great sex or even having a great relationship. You, your interest is in, okay, let's really meet and start to see what these patterns are in the, interest, in, in the direct interest in truth. Because as long as these patterns are playing, they pull on our attention. So as we just together and using this, you could say, to notice what patterns are coming up and still staying with the truth of ourselves. It's such, so, so very, very rich what you start to discover. You start to see ways in which you've been actually both hurting yourselves and each other without recognizing it. Basically in an unconscious pattern, you could say. And because everybody is doing it, and there's a cultural hypnosis, it just continues. But it's a, there's a it's a there's a very high cost for it actually. I mean, it's, one, I mean most people's idea of enlightenment mm -hmm. is that there's sort of nothing left in the unconscious, that uh, all the unconscious stuff has been processed and. And one is aware. Can one really have a big piece of things in the unconscious and still be uh, know who they are? And, and uh, it seems like a contradiction. You see, people speak about enlightenment as if it's as if it's something, yeah. That there's someone that gets enlightened. Mm. But the actual discovery is that this whole sense of I. It's just a feeling. It's, it is not an actual entity called I. It's just every night when you go to sleep and you come into deep sleep, this entity, this feeling of I is gone. You don't have a sense of I. So you start to recognize that the sense of I is merely an activity. It's not actually an entity. It's not someone. And that 
what's, what's actually happening is a play in consciousness. So this whole way of operating that there's somebody here that's messed up or that's enlightened or that's nearly enlightened is seen to be a fallacy. What's seen to be the truth is that there's only one, not even one, there's only awareness here. And that there's no body that could even be enlightened. And very often what happens is when somebody recognizes this, or when this is recognized in consciousness, then other people call such a person enlightened. It's, I never heard Papaji say he was enlightened. He, he would joke about it actually. He just said, you know, look, I am that. Meaning I'm everything. I'm everywhere. I'm in every, everything. You see, I'm that, that in which, which is the same in everyone. There's not a you and a me or anything like this. And it, this is a direct experience. So, and consciousness ultimately is not divided. It's, it's one thing so that everything is consciousness. There's not uh, me and consciousness, God and the devil. This is just creations of the mind. And even the mind itself is, is consciousness. So once, once this is recognized, then it's seen that the way consciousness is playing itself out, with all the patterning, with all the mental sets and everything, is the play of consciousness. When you take it personally, when you think it's you, then there's a then there's the difficulty. So in this, uh, go ahead. Yeah. But I, I had a question. But um, can I interrupt you? Doesn't matter. I mean, it, you know, I, I mean, personally, been in this relationship business for a long time, also, and uh, I mean, it's it's it's. It really seems like it's almost impossible in a way, you know, to really, you know, sort of get this love that people are looking for and consciousness. I mean, it's all, it's all, uh, you know, my striving also, my longing also. But uh, I'm just wondering if you're not opening a big can of worms because uh, in a way, like, <laughs> You know, with Punjaji also, I mean, there wasn't much talk about, uh, you know, uh, I have two girlfriends and I'm not sure which one. And, and, you know, there wasn't too much talk that way. And with many people, relationships are sort of played down. You've dealt with relationships now. Deal with who you are. Be, you know, find out who you are, that sort of thing. But when you start dealing with relationships, it seems like you're dealing with all kinds of old anger and pain and rage and fury and all of this starts to come up that people have a bit buried in a way yeah and are you not opening up a can of worms i mean you're you're getting people to especially the way you're you're presenting it you know all the stuff that's going on in you you know and uh, that you've sometimes uh, you know had revengeful thoughts and all these kind of things you know and my god this is loaded in everybody and uh, uh, I just wonder uh, uh, I mean if you realize what you're what you're opening up in all this I think it's great but I well so far I can just say I mean what some people are telling me is that it's been very helpful to them that because uh, in my own process as these things have come up and been seen it's been such a relief and, and incredible and I'm not speaking theoretically I'm speaking that I've actually lived through these experiences and, and seen it in my own self and so I've had people that have come to satsang that have, almost everyone has been hurt to some degree in satsang, in, in relationships, and many people very, very severely. And we speak together and all of a sudden something clicks for them. They see 
for themselves. It's not just another theory. It's not just. It's not working on anything or trying to get rid of anything or trying to even understand anything. They literally see the mechanics of the play, and they're free of it. And the relief is so awesome for them. And you can see their whole faces change, their eyes change. A load that they were carrying around is gone. Mm -hmm. So somehow it's working. I don't. Again, it, 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 it does seem to be working at yeah. least in, in your hands. I was just yeah. wondering what you felt about like uh, <laughs> catharsis processes of uh, yeah. you know because it seems to me I've gone back to Osho many times just dealing with relationships, you know, and there of course you know uh, there's a work on yourself, see who you are, but there's also like dynamic meditation you know, chance to let out your fury a little bit so that you're not having to just be aware that uh, that I'm aware of, you know, great rage going on inside of myself, but I'm not the great rage. I mean, sometimes it's a little bit tough, you know, when you're in strong emotion to just keep it separated and, uh, and you, there's a danger of getting identified with it and acting it out in some way. Um, so I was wondering if you have any feelings about uh, the need for that. I mean, it seems like Osho see, did create that first before he started opening up about relationships. You yeah, know? you see, I, I'd say it all has to do with maturity. Mm -hmm. Like, a child has different needs in an adult. It's just like that. So, somehow, satsang is really for the top range of maturity, you could say. It's people that are ready to to see. And that seems to be the people that get attracted. If it if people come and it's not they're not ready for it, they tend to leave. It's they, they sense it and they leave. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe they need to go through something else. And it's appropriate for where they're at. Mm -hmm. But at some point uh, like I said earlier, it, it's it's definitely healthier to get it out rather than to, to hold it inside of yourself. But the third way actually is to directly experience, to not just throw it out or to not, um, but to see, to directly see. And yes, of course, it's it's a, it's a fire because the the tendency is to either want to repress it to not look at it at all or to express it and a lot of times when if, if it's really expressed it's expressed at someone and put all over them mm -hmm. at least when people are expressing and just getting it out but i've seen people have been jumping up and down and expressing for years and unless they really see the basis of what's going on it's an endless process unless they come to the bottom of what's going on with it you see, I mean, the thought pattern or the story that they're telling themselves, it just it'll keep coming up and up and up and up. So, like I say, at some point people get tired of it and they're ready to look deeper. Mm -hmm. And at that point, then they're ready for satsang. And frequently you tell people to kind of go into their feelings or go into the center of if they're experiencing some fear of the yeah, opposite I mean, sex. I would, yeah, I would say it's not even going into the feelings. It's like seeing that what they call a feeling actually is just the mind isolating out a certain sensation, labeling it, making a relationship to it, and then a story about it, and then they're already involved. At that point, you can't just go into the feeling of it. You have to first remove the story mm -hmm. and remove all the labeling, all the ideas about it, and once you directly experience it, yes, you've, you've seen it happen many times in satsang where people go, oh, there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. And something that's bothered them for years even. Mm -hmm. Suddenly they go, they're laughing usually. My God, there's nothing there. This whole thing has been nothing. And, to, yeah. then, and that is just beautiful because the, then they're free of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, in your hands, it, it seems to work beautifully in a certain way. Yeah. I had the fantasy of maybe you're putting couples up on, you know, you have a tendency to put people on the chair on the weekends mm -hmm. and to be, oh, uh, and to be, uh, and to experience what it is to be in front of everybody and to, 
I was just wondering how would, if you if you're going to evolve into having couples come up and and maybe share their their yeah, relationship. Thing. Yeah, this is very new for us actually, mm -hmm. and I have no idea which how what it'll require of me mm -hmm. or how it'll evolve. Yeah, and I mean we've only actually uh, spoken publicly. I think this is the the third or fourth time, so it's very oh, new for us. Very new. Yeah, it's very new for us. And it happened just because people kept asking us about it. And then we decided to try it, to see what happened. And the response was so, so much gratefulness because, I mean, just last night one couple came to Kali and just said, you know, we actually, we've been married for years and years and years and we, we took time to actually meet. And they were both crying. You know, people can be together for years and have sex on a regular or irregular basis and actually never meet. Because mm -hmm. when they get together, they just go into their normal routine, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, there's no real meeting actually. You can't, it, you can't call it making love, you can only call it sex. Mutually uh, getting rid of the tension, of the sex tension, you could say. And uh, yeah, so this is something new for you, and uh, I, I also am a little bit nervous for you. I have to admit, you know, like what 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 is uh, what is uh, what is Isaac getting himself into? You know, uh, well, uh, I can always stop. Yeah, no, well, uh, because I think it was last year or something. Sometimes people didn't mention something about uh, some relationship, and you said no, that we're we're not dealing with this in yeah. satsang, and I thought, right, you know, I mean, but. This is really, you know, the human problem. But also, it seems to me that some people have great problems in relationships, even if they know who they are. But some people don't have great problems in relationships, even if they know who they are. But they have great problems in making money yeah. or in uh, lots of other areas. Yeah, you know, yeah. and why are we, you know, why, why do, you know, I mean, is there not a way to sort of, or is that worth thinking about to sort of, open up a satsang to everything. Some people are stuck with a misunderstanding of a past guru they were with or Correct. some, you know, in all but kinds of areas people. And people do ask questions about that in satsang. Mm -hmm. And we do, we do address it. Mm -hmm. um, the areas that where people are very shy to speak about are sex relating and money. Yeah. So these are maybe some point it'll evolve to speaking about money, I don't know. This is, it just happened this way. It mm -hmm. certainly wasn't planned, and so now we're 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 exploring it and seeing what happens with it. Yeah. Well, I so who who knows? I really don't know how it'll how it'll happen. How do we have to watch time or we're, it's time out? Okay. We're taking a break. Well, we want to finish it. Actually, oh, we want to finish it. Yeah. Well, okay. then. Uh, uh, Goodbye. Uh, uh, well, there's there's a lot more here, and this is by me been a, a, a you know wonderful interview, and uh, it's it opened up really a lot more questions. Yes. But we really don't have much more time, so at this point, I think we're gonna thank Isaac for joining us, and uh, and thank you all for watching, and uh, and uh, if you're so inclined. I'll announce it again. The satsangs are uh, Isaac Shapiro at Trans Buddha, and he's uh, meeting every night at 7.30, Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon until 9 at night. And, and, the, and the, the relating, for people that are interested in relating, but I'd say that, again, this relating is useless unless you know who you are. So. First come to satsang, then you can hear about the relating satsangs. And if people are worried about money, it's by donations only. And uh, Isaac has always been beautiful that if people can't afford it, it's, uh, it's still open for everyone. And donations are certainly encouraged. But if, if people are short, it, Isaac has been wonderful about letting people come in to, to taste the satsang. So if people are at all interested, I recommend it strongly. He will be here again till. June 7th, is that my understanding? Yeah. Thanks. Thank you.
Wilt u leren van en over computers? De Mad Processor heeft het allemaal in huis. Multiplayer games en internet. Hardware, software, snuffelen. PC Dumdag. Speciaal. Specialist in Indonesische rijstafel. Speciaal. Wel reserveren. Speciaal. Mindlift Beeldbankiers. Enorme collectie foto's op CD-ROM. Digital Content Libraries. Vraag catalogus. Egosoft. Brainmachines. Een brainmachine is een apparaatje dat door middel van licht en geluid de frequentie van de hersengolven beïnvloedt. De gebruiker heeft een bril en een koptelefoon op en lichtsignalen en geluidspulsen nemen hem mee naar verschillende staten van bewustzijn zoals ontspanning, concentratie, meditatie, slaap. Egosoft levert een breed gamma brainmachines. PCE. Goed idee voor een PC. Eigen technische dienst. Gespecialiseerd in zakelijke computers, netwerken, printers. Voor een offerte, kijk op onze website. BCE, goed idee voor een PC.